Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Keep Up's Yoga Before Coffee. This is your quick self-care guide in the morning. Ready? This is my teacher, Danielle. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Okay, okay and we're gonna start by opening our feet today. Perfect. So, this is Maggie's favorite. This is my favorite because it hurts. <laughs> And um, it makes me feel like I'm improving. Yeah, well, for sure this is gonna be painful for a lot of you, so if um, if you need a little bit of extra cushioning, Support. yeah, you could put your blanket or a pillow or a block, anything really under the the butt so that there's less pressure on the feet. But this is great- Because if you're higher, it hurts less, yeah, right? Yeah, and it, will, and it will hurt the knees less too. So if you want, um, you can always put a block or a blanket also under the knees. That's also uh, a nice option thanks, too, thanks. to get more cushioning. But ideally, we want to use no props. That's what we're like working towards. Um, but this is so great because it really opens up the bottoms of your feet mm. and it helps to open up the arches. And it really is going to give you a better connection with the earth. And it's, it looks easy, but it's super it's painful. It's super painful. It's super painful. And I promise you, your toes are not breaking off. Okay, everyone thinks that. Everyone thinks that. <laughs> How are you doing? Here? I thought that in the beginning. Good. Yeah. You want to open the tops? Yeah, yeah, great. Okay. So then I like to come forward with fingers and then just come back. So as you come back, just make sure you're not here using the muscles of the back. Really try to um, bring the hands back. And again, if it's too hard for you, you can always put your hands on blocks. And I like to kind of I like to think this is like, um, what is it called, foam rolling? Oh yes, yeah. where nice. it's like, you kind of just find the little areas that feel stuck and tight and just massage into them to open them up. This is a great one to prevent carpal tunnel and arthritis. Mm. And our whole practice is really longevity practice. Exactly. So it's preventing all of that. Exactly. Great, okay. And then let's put on your hands and knees. Okay. So you can either start with the fingers pointing forward or you could flip your hand 180 degrees and bring it back. Okay, either one works. And then make sure that your knees are under your hips, your hands are under your shoulders, and the tops of the feet are down. Your, sh your hands are shoulder distance and your knees are hip distance. So just really try to measure well. And then inhale, round your spine, pull your navel up and in. And then exhale, look forward, spread through the collarbones, lift the chin, pull your buttock bones apart. Good, and then inhale, round, and exhale, arch. And then just move back and forth like this. And this is a great way to kind of energize yourself for the day. Even if you just get up and you get on your hands and knees and do this for like a minute or two, it will change your day. It will it change will. your lower back. It's better than coffee. Yeah, it really is. I mean, manipulating the breath is another way to energize yourself without any without any uh, sort of stimulant or any additives. So use the breath, use the movement to your advantage. Keep going. Woo! And we can go as fast as we want, yeah, right? Yeah, you can go fast, you can go slow. Some of you might look like this, that's fine. Good, and then start to stir around it. So go around, so use your hips, and this should really just feel good. I've been flipping my palms for many years, so I really love the palms flipped, and again, this helps um, prevent arthritis and carpal tunnel as well, and opens up the, the necks of the body. We have five necks, the neck of the head, the necks of the hands, the wrists, and the necks of the feet, the ankles, and they all tend to bottleneck with um, like uh, like garbage, basically. So if you think of uh, like a rushing river and you think of the bends in a river, all the the bends collect, collect garbage. So it's the same thing with our joints. So it's important to open them up and we stir around them. So we really focus on the joints in this practice, the bones. Feels so good. Feels so good, right? So good. So go in the other way, go in the other direction if you haven't yet. You can make small circles again, you can make big circles, but just think that you wanna really aerate and integrate your pelvis, your hips. You wanna access all of it. Great, and then flip the hands back. You can stay there for, for much longer, but for a time sake, we're just gonna move into something else, but feel free to really indulge there. And then from here, let's come into a downward facing dog. So, a downward facing dog to me is a, is a triangle, a, an equilateral triangle. So make sure that your hands are still shoulder distance, the fingers are forward, the feet are hip distance, and uh, your feet are slightly pigeon-toed. So your heels are wide and your toes are in. And then bend your knees, so this is a bent knee dog, and then lift your butt and mirror your heels down at the same time so that you really start to send weight into your legs. And then find the four corners of each palm, the knuckles of the hand, which are here, okay? So the knuckles of the hand here, the four corners of the palm, and she presses her hands down. Oh, this is so nice. And then revolves her armpits in and finds length through her spine, lifts her hips higher. Good, beautiful. So that the 
fulcrum of the pose is her sacrum. This is so nice, Mag. So she's not overworking her back, she's using her legs, her root system. Awesome, and then come forward to your plank. So then you're at a 90 degree angle here. Mm -hmm. So the shoulders are over the wrist, good. Her legs are straight, beautiful. She finds the balls of her feet, and then think that your front body moves forward. So instead of being stuck in the back like this, see if you can bring your front body forward and the crown of your head forward as you reach your heels back. Good, and then bring it back to your back. Again, you can stay in this longer if you want, but you know, if it's early in the morning and you're just waking up, feel free to just move it a little faster. And then come forward again to your plank, and this time come all the way through to your up dog. But this time stay on the balls of your feet. So try to keep the pelvis lifted. The crown of the head reaches up, the collarbones spread. Legs are super straight, toes are tucked under. And then bring it back. And then keep going forward and back. The 10, or six times. Let's just say six times, forward and back. So again, this is just gonna start to energize you a bit. Think that as you move forward, it's your pelvis that's bringing you forward. It's your uh, lower body that's bringing you forward, not your upper body. So if you're having pain in your upper body, just know that it's because you're not in your lower body enough. So eventually, the more you practice, the more you start to bring awareness to the legs, it will get easier. I don't know how many I did, but and, and I can't enough. see. <laughs> it looks great. It looks great. Great, okay, and then we're back in our dog. From here, lunge your right foot outside of your right hand. So now we're gonna come into a little lizard pose. So you can tap the back knee down, tap of the foot down. Do you want the option to keep the back knee up? Yeah, yeah, why don't okay. you do that oh, one? Oh. Yeah, yeah, good. And then make sure your front foot is at 45 degrees. So that just means the toes are uh, turned out. And then option to come down onto your forearms. So from for here, you know, you can kind of actually bring your forearms to the ground, of course. You could stay on your fingertips. You can use blocks. I mean, there's so many options, but just try to circle around yourself a bit. So it's, it's, it's better if you tuck the toes under here, if you can, to just circle around. So use the ball of the foot to kind of circle around your forearms in one direction and then the other. Some of you, again, might just keep the knee down and just sort of hang out here. But see if you can drop into your pelvis, start to open up your lower body a bit. Oh, that's so nice. Back. And then walk it over to the left and then bring the right hand to the And then press the knee away, drop the right shoulder within the ear. Oh, so great. So good. And feel the, the left um, quad opening up. The front of the left leg is gonna really feel nice to open that up. And then option, if you'd like to take your right hand up and back, and reach for your back foot. Oh. And then you can pulse here. I like to pulse because if the quad is tight, this is going to be really challenging. If you can't grab it, stay here. Can't grab it, stay here. Yeah. Good. Oh. And then let it go. Walk the hands back. And then let's turn and parallel the feet to the left. So you're in a wide leg straddle. Oh, wow. So hang over here. First, let the legs be super wide. Or just fine and just hang over. And then shift the weight forward and back between the balls of the feet and the heels of the feet. Make sure that the toes are again in and the heels are out. And then maybe interlace your fingers behind your back. Try to get all the fingers interlaced and try to get the palms as tight as possible. And just hang over. So pull the shoulders away from the ears. Reach the hands out in front of you. And just take a few breaths here. Keep a little bend in your knees, okay? A little bend, and then shift the weight towards the balls of the feet, the pads of the feet. That will take you um, slightly forward, and it will allow you to flush the backs of your legs. Oh, wow. And then let's bring the hands down, and Mag, let's reach for opposite ankles. Oh, hi, oh, hi. Yeah, I have to walk my feet in a little. Yeah, so this is okay. really the perfect measure. Uh, of, it's actually the length of your leg approximately, okay? Um, and it's your hands are on opposite ankles and you pull the hands into the ankles and press the ankles into the hands. And some of you might just hang here. This is totally fine. Again, a little bend in the knees is gonna take you out of the back, which we're not looking to overwork, and it's gonna put you in your leg. So it might feel unfamiliar to you, but just go with it for now. Just try it for today. And then maybe you start to swim it a bit. So you bring your left arm, for example, straight up towards the ceiling, and then you reach out, watch the hand with your gaze, 
and then bring the left hand to the right ankle and then the other side. I'm doing the other one where you go under me. Great, sure. Just as an option. All the way. So it's just, it's just trying to take some of the pressure off of your lower back basically here. So again, the bend in the knees is really important, especially if you're new to this practice. So just a little bend is good enough. Oh, this is so good. So good. So this is great for the kidneys and the kidneys are like your batteries and they get very taxed when you're stressed and they, you know, of course, release all the stress hormones. So taking the pressure off of your kidneys through your yoga practice is really important. So just knowing why you're practicing to de-stress is a great reason. And again, all this whole, this whole sequence will really help that. Good. And then come back to the front of the mat, turn towards the front. Sweep the leg back to your dog, maybe come through a flow. So for me, that's just a plank to an up dog, back to a down dog. Feel free to do a chaturanga if you if you have that in your practice, but just make sure you're doing it with, with good um, integrity. Okay, left leg forward now. So left foot turns to 45. Again, maybe you come down into your forearms, maybe you stay up. Maybe you tuck the back toes under. My favorite is tucking the back toes under and um, and using the back leg as my anchor to circle around. And then see if you can soften through the back. See if you can connect with your breath, keep it full. There's no stress here, there's no pressure. Try to use good measure, but then, you know, just enjoy. This is, a, this is an early morning practice that, that should feel good. Good, and then walk it to the right. Yeah, right. Now all the dogs are just Everybody's resting. sleeping. Everyone's resting. We're doing yoga and everybody's sleeping. Yeah. And then oh, perfect. left knee, left hand to left knee. Unfurl the shoulder, so just relax the left shoulder. And then maybe bring the arm in line with here. That's always an option. Or you can bring your hand, your left hand to your right foot. And again, I like to kind of pulse here a bit. It's pretty tight on you too. Yeah. I mean, everyone, the front, the front thigh is really is a challenge for everyone, opening up the front thigh because we sit so much. The flexor. Oh, wow. Good. Mm, nice. And then let it go. And then walk the hands in and then bring it back to your dog pose. Just take a few breaths in your dog pose, bend your knees, lift your butt, lower your heels down. So just remember to be spacious, to create space in the body, which is what we're trying to do. You must move in two directions at once. So use your imagination to travel the backs of the leg by bending, lifting, and yearning the heels down. Can we open up here? Open, oh yeah, sure. So let's walk the left foot in so it's flat on the floor. And then lift the right leg up. And then bend the knee and stack the hip. And then circle it. This is one of my favorites. Oh my gosh. Yes, no. baby. So <laughs> oh yes. So Romeo likes this one. Flex the right foot so the foot leg stays engaged. And then I like to come onto my fingertips to really keep it light in the upper body. So if you notice, everything we're doing is really not, uh, there's not a lot of work happening in the upper body. It's all in the lower body. So if you're new to this, you know, it's gonna feel a little bit different, but um, I promise you it will make you stronger overall. Oh, nice. Wow, well, and then let's do the other side. Left leg extends straight back. Again, if you can go on the fingertips, great, but that's a little advanced. And then, then the knee. Back the hip and circle. Oh, hi, Romeo. Oh my God! Wow, my. Yes, you can. It's still so good, right? Oh. Hi. Okay. Excuse me, I'm trying to open my hip. Excuse me. No, <laughs> Oh, look, that is so good right now. Good, and then walk it forward to your hands. You're going to be in a little hang pose, forward fold. And then everyone, make sure your feet are really hip distance. So this is the same distance that your feet have been in your tabletop, which is what we started in, in the dog pose, in the plank pose, in the up dog, it's the same. The feet are either the length of one foot, so I take my foot and I turn it in, my big toe of my left foot into towards the right heel, and I measure that way, or I take my two fists and stick them between my arches, okay? That's gonna give you the measure. Again, the heels are wide, the toes are in, and then again, a bend in the knee. Maggie, what did you think when you first came to the tunnel with the knees bent? I mean, it was new. It was it was totally counter to every other yoga I've ever been in because right. everybody's telling you to straighten your legs. And the truth is, hi, handsome. Oh no! Oh, it's very distracting. Oh, it's no. very, very distracting. 
Um, but the truth is, I didn't actually start opening up my hamstrings until I bent my knees. Yeah, it's very counterintuitive. Very. So it's like when you bend, you're, when you straighten your legs on your own, what happens for a lot of people is the legs straighten, but the roundness comes into the back. And so, and so you're really rounding the back and overstretching the hamstrings, the hamstrings almost. So instead, when you bend the knees mm -hmm. and you travel in two directions at once, so I think right. that I turn my heels down yep. and I lift my buttock bones right it's here sky. up. Then you start to consciously open the backs of the legs in a really safe yeah. way without uh, rounding through the back. Also. So safe. And then the other thing of like keeping the um, torso and the thighs yes. together. Yes. This is so key because anytime it separates, I start to use different muscles, and all I really want to do is open up my 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 lungs, my hamstrings. You know. Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, great great point. So the the, the lungs of the legs are the hamstrings. So if your hamstrings are tight. The lungs of your your actual lungs, which are in your front body, obviously, are also going to be tight. So if you open up if, if you open up the, the backs of the legs, it's going to open up the front as well. And yeah, Maggie's right. Like the chest to the thigh is just what really ensures that you stay in your lower body, stay in your legs again, instead of rounding in the back, which is what most people look like, which is what I'm doing right now. Right. Anyway, and then let's do the little rainbow pose. So you walk the hands out, and then you walk them to the right. So 12 o'clock is in front of you, and then walk them to say two o'clock. But as you go to two o'clock, everyone, keep your feet parallel, keep your legs parallel, keep your hips even. So don't let the hips come with you like this. Keep your legs back so the left, you put more weight into the left foot. So even with Maggie, I'm gonna pull her left hip back a bit. She's gonna reach out. And again, she's not using the muscles of her back, she's really in her leg. Oh, that's great, let me come back, go to the left. But then I'm gonna pull her left, her right hip back so that she puts more weight there. And then walk it back to center. Again, you can shorten or lengthen any of this to, to tailor it to, you know, for your needs. But um, but yeah, be, staying in here for at least five breaths in each movement is gonna be great. And then take your hands and stick them under your feet. So now you get a chance to open up the back of the hand, which is another place that carries a lot of tension. Oh, hello. So try to shove the whole hand under there. Oh. 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 He just wants to make sure no one can see what we're doing. Okay, great. Yeah. Great. Good, thank you. Oh, that was so good. So good. So if you have Eat. this, keep thinking you're bending your knees, you're lifting the buttock bones, and you're yearning your heels down. You can even bend your elbows and pull your collarbones wide here, but make sure that you're releasing through the head and the neck. The upper body is so soft. All the effort should be in the lower body. Oh my God, so good. So we're really establishing a strong, stable root system through the legs, through the pelvis here in this whole practice so that we have freedom in our, uh, in our back. We have the space in our uh, torsos and really good vision. By the way, if your legs hurt and they're shaking, yeah. it, they're supposed to. It's a great sign. <laughs> it means that energy is moving through them and they're really working well. We're talking and making it seem very casual, but it, it hurts. Yeah, yeah, it's painful, especially for you. Very, very intense. Okay, let's take the hands under the under the heels. Good. So press. So the hands go all the way under the heels, and the middle finger bisects the arch. If you can get that. If you can't get this, just take your hands to opposite elbows. It's fine. You can hang over that way. But just remember that the more you learn to use the lower body, like I mentioned this, there's more freedom here. I'm not overworking the back. I'm not overworking my neck. There's no tension here. So the better you can use the legs, the more um, yeah, freedom you'll feel overall in your body. Good. Okay, let's let's roll it up next. So, so you can either roll it up or come into like a chair pose. I'll do a chair pose. So I bend my knees and I come into a little chair. Take my butt way out. Notice I'm not here. Sticking the butt out. I'm finding my front body available. Beautiful. And then I stand up. Oh. And then let's tick tock side to side. Oh, and show them what that is. So works. I love to lift one heel. Yeah, heel goes side to side. Nice. Oh, what am I doing? Ugh. Same side that you're bending on. Is the yeah, same side. Same side. And then fine length from side to side to the waist. Ugh. Good. If you got a dog, you can do it over a dog. Yes, yeah, so nice. <laughs> Great, and then let that go. And then I sometimes like to just shake it out a bit. You know, just you can take your fist to your body and kind of just open up anything that needs to open up to wake yourself up. 
or just pop a little bit. That's your friend. Oh, yeah. And just your partner. Oh, my God. It's great. It's Yay. a great bonding exercise. So good. Oh, good. And I think that's a good 20 minutes. I think it's a really good, I mean, I don't know exactly how long it is, but it's, it's a way to energize your body. It's a way to energize your mind. And make sure if you're doing it for yourself, before, the reason why we called it before coffee okay. is because you want to do it before you start to get distracted with life, before life takes you away from yourself. And to make sure you're centering on self, not in a selfish way, but centering on self so that you're better, so you can do better throughout the day. All right, well, that's our quick morning java, yeah, right, yeah, for the body. Exactly. Now you can go make your coffee and start your day, but don't forget to take care of yourself before you ever do. Yeah. Lots of love, see you soon. Bye. 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 Say bye. And don't forget to have fun. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God.